My cheating wife has so many demands. I am not op. Original post by you, apparently cuckolded in R, true off my chest. Trigger warnings. Infidelity. Depression. COVID-19. Anxiety. Suicidal ideation. Bipolar disorder. Relationship issues. Less than. Mood spoilers. Despair. Confusion. Hope. Uncertainty. Less than. My wife cheated on me and now has so many demands. And it feels so unfair, sat. June 3, 2023. I am realizing this is a long story because I included details I felt were relevant. But I am probably being way too verbose. Read the TL. DR if you want. But if there is a lack of clarity. Read the wall of text. I. 30M. And my wife. 30F. Got married recently. We were together for six years before marriage and engaged for three. Delayed the wedding twice because of COVID. Her mental health has always been a struggle. Depression. ADHD. Anxiety. But during the relationship it feels like it's slowly been getting worse. And COVID was really bad. She really struggled with not seeing people during the height of the pandemic. And anxiety from a family health scare. During this time she lost her job but got a new one quickly after that was remote. But therefore more irregular with ours. I have always tried my best to be supportive. And she said in the past that she felt I was the only person she's ever met who made her feel she could become who she wants to be. But I suppose that stopped being true at some point. A few months after our wedding. She got COVID and also had long COVID symptoms for a while. It was very difficult mentally and physically. I think she was mostly recovered after several months when she got COVID again and long COVID symptoms again. We knew better how to manage it. So it improved slightly faster. But stress-wise, it all became too much. After she got COVID the second time, we started being much more careful with our masking. We only ate indoors for important occasions and wore masks in bars. We sat outside in the winter at any place that still had outdoor seating. But after her second COVID recovery, she spiraled into a depression worse than I had seen before. She decided to take a leave from work. During the depressive episode and leave, I fed her, did all the household chores, and worked full time. During her leave, she started improving. She attempted to do many things. Like take classes. But the only thing that she really did consistently was yoga. Her sleep schedule was really inconsistent from the depression. So she would often struggle to go to sleep. Resulting in being up late and then napping and continuing to cycle with late sleep times. This meant that she would take later yoga classes. After dinner. And then have energy. She would say she's going to go to a bar with friends from the class or that she was going to draw at some bar after, or that she needed to think about therapy, etc. Usually, she would say her intention was to be at the bar for an hour or two and then come home. But she would inevitably say, just another two hours while I think about things, and do that again. Until bars closed, then she'd come home, sometimes drunk. During recovery from a depressive episode and long COVID, I thought this was an unhealthy coping mechanism. And it made her sleep even worse. It meant she'd sleep through the day and not get vitamin D. And sleep quality is so crucial for mental health as well. I would say my thoughts on this. But she's always been defensive about feedback from me. I've journaled about this many times and talked to her about it including asking her to talk to her therapist about it. But during our couple's therapy sessions, we never really got to issues I had with her communication. We only talked about methods I should use to ensure I don't trigger her from past trauma and how we can both de-escalate. Very valuable things, of course. But this time I suppose was too much. During her times out, guys would talk to her. Eventually, one wore her down, and she made out with him. She gave him her alternate email.
and they'd meet up to make out, eventually having sex. She also met two other people who she told she wanted something purely physical with, but she says she never had physical sex with them. She would send dirty texts to them and masturbate to their texts. I discovered this when I picked up her phone to charge it when she was napping. We have each other on Face ID and thumbprint. And when you start charging, the screen lights up and shows past notifications. I saw a weird text. So I opened her phone and looked at it. I didn't think it was suspicious when I clicked on it and had literally zero suspicions until I realized what I was actually reading. I looked at it purely with curiosity because we were so open otherwise. I thought I was distraught. But I also saw that this guy sent emails to her alternate email that she doesn't keep open by default. I sent myself the emails so she couldn't deny anything later. She woke up from her nap. And we talked and cried. I was so broken and numb. But her remorse seemed so complete. And she said that she was dying to be wanted and feel young and alive. She said she never wanted to be with anyone else. She said she's messed up. Mentally. And she's so sorry she's destroyed our marriage too. I wanted to work on this. Her mental health. And us. And I told her I wanted to be with her. The next day was hard. But we seemed to get through it somehow. Then she had a therapist appointment. We talked about it afterward. Her therapist seemed to tell her. She's never done this before. So it isn't who she is. She was feeling trapped and wanted attention the leave from work and freedom is working for her. Mental health. Which is true. It was a violation of privacy the way I discovered it. And during this conversation, all these things she said very defensively and with an attitude of blaming me for her actions. I was not happy about the perceived lack of guilt. Over the next few days, she seemed to take responsibility. And I had hope for our growth from this. But then she wanted to think about what to do about her job after an afternoon yoga class. This was five days after I found out. After. She delayed when she'd come home again. And again. I told her to take her time until she told me she'd be home by two. I said she can't do the exact thing she did when she cheated this soon after cheating. How can she expect me to trust her? She had location sharing on her phone. And I went to the bar she was at. I told her this again in person. She said she was staying until 2 and that's how it was. I left. And she did come home later. I don't think she cheated or anything. After couples therapy the day after. She had another therapist appointment a few hours later. After that. She's basically not been home. She has told me semi-loose plans having dinner with a certain friend, but not more than that. She says she needs space. She'll come home late and sleep on the couch until I wake up. Then go sleep in our bed until it's time to leave the house again. Based on our couple's therapy session, I think she is going to demand changes from me so she doesn't feel trapped. I don't want her to feel trapped. I want her to be healthy and to have healthy coping mechanisms and to want to be with me. She still texts, I love you, to me. But she hasn't said she loves me in a week. I am so scared she wants to separate more completely. Not only for my sake but hers. She's had suicidal ideation. And I just want her to be okay. I think she has projected her parents' relationship onto me and will see anything I do as. Controlling or annoying at this point. I think her therapist has heard her talk about me this way as well and is encouraging separation. I don't think her therapist is wrong based on what she's heard. But I think it's possible my wife is being selective about what she tells the therapist for example. She didn't tell the therapist she was cheating on me for the two months it was happening. I would guess that she also wasn't telling the therapist how often she was going out alone drinking. At our next couple's therapy session, I think I'm going to be told she's moving out. And if I don't want that, I'll be controlling her again. I don't know how it's come to this. When the couple's therapist found out, she told me, 
Just because she feels trapped does not mean that you are trapping her. But I am scared that my wife, who definitely has felt I walk over her in conversations, is choosing now to put her foot in the sand. It feels like the most unfair time and decision. But I don't want to lose her and start my whole life over. I also don't want to acquiesce to this and have her think she is right to think I want to control her. That would result in a life of her resenting me in her mind. I know I'm not blameless we got couples therapy before this happened for a reason. I am argumentative, and she gets triggered by confrontation from past trauma. We have worked on it a lot, and I am doing better. But I'm not perfect. But above all else, I want her to be happy and healthy. And I thought she knew that. So how can she think that I want to control her instead of thinking she's coping unhealthily? I don't know how I came across with this text. But I am kind of numb right now writing it. I can't stress enough that I try in every conversation to understand. Even if she feels I am just trying to win or if the conversation gets heightened by my tone or her. Trauma. It's the number one thing we've talked about. And it hurts so much that she really thinks I want to control her even though what I am proposing, not demanding, is as mild as being at home by midnight on weekdays and trying to sleep well for her mental health. TL. DR. Wife cheated for two months. Felt I was being controlling because suggestions for what to do about COVID and depression is probably going to demand space and to be treated differently. I am torn between not wanting to lose her and feeling like it is totally unfair to focus on how I need to be better rather than her mental health and our communication. Relevant comments. His wife 10. You are in the thick of this so you can't see it for what it really is. She may have mental health struggles but it sounds like you have done what you can to help her. You can't force her to help herself. She needs to want that on her own. You may not be tying her down, but she probably feels like your marriage is. I think she came close to death and decided she wants to do what she wants no matter how self-destructive that is or how much she hurts you. You can't fix this. If she is not on board with healing your marriage, there is no changing that. More you try to control that, the more she will pull away. I don't think her mental health should be more important than yours. You have already prioritized her. To come back from infidelity. The cheating partner has to not just feel shame or guilt. They have to have a deep sense of remorse and be willing to go the extra mile to help their partner. And marriage heal. From the way you have described her since the day you found out. She is nowhere near remorseful. She wants to pin this on you and make it your fault. It's not. She doesn't want to feel bad. She doesn't want to put in the work to make it right. This is so cliche but the tighter you try to hold on to sand. The more you lose. Focus on your own healing and mental health. You're going to make yourself sick trying to chase her. Accommodate her. And ultimately you will lose yourself. Consider separation and really letting her go. Update. My wife cheated on me and now has so many demands. And it feels so unfair, Tuesday, July 11th, 2023. I'm going to give an update and then respond to some common feedback I got. After seeing the couple's therapist again, the couple's therapist and my therapist strongly felt my wife likely has bipolar disorder. One or two unknown, triggered from long COVID or something. Some family also suspected it. Over the last few weeks, We've had a few cycles in which she comes back to me crying, apologizing, saying she doesn't want anyone but me. All the things I want to hear. We'll talk about what our future may look like. Whether we need a change of location or some kind of reset. We make up, including sex. This form of absolution for her seems to calm her. But then she seemed to get antsy again and leave for increasing amounts of time. Again with unsafe behaviors. She's admitted to continued cheating in these times as well. I am worried about it. As she's come back from wherever she's been at like 6 a.m. and sleep for 14. 15. 
once even 19 hours. It feels very stereotypical bipolar behavior. Talking to my therapist, I've come to realize how unlikely it is that this will end up okay. I love this person, and as much as I want the best for her, it is not guaranteed that I am actually helping. Not because I'm not doing all I can, but because all change for her has to be internal. And statistically, bipolar takes a while to treat, and even if it is treated very successfully, we go back to having a relationship in which she was so insecure about whether she was good enough. For me, about her own intelligence, and about confrontation, that it'll be hard to think we'll make it regardless. So I've basically made the internal decision that I'll be seeking legal separation. Basically divorce with separated finances. But she can stay on my health insurance. My therapist has also said that I do exhibit some patterns for control to alleviate anxiety. So some uncertainty will be good to learn to deal with it. So I think it'll be a win-win for my mental state, my wife, and my future. I'm basically going to prepare this all. And when I think my wife is in a stable place, I'll ask for separation. She has already packed her things intending to move out anyway. So I think it can be relatively seamless. I am going to take some solo trips and ask some friends to plan a different trip with me as well. I've also been reaching out to many old friends and re-establishing my old community. And it's made me sad that I lost touch with so many great people and so happy that I have been able to get them back in my life. For the feedback, many of you were right that she'd continue to cheat. His wife 10 feet was really amazing and said what I needed to hear. I can't tell you how appreciative I am of being kind while centering my well-being. There were others as well. And I am glad you took the time. Otherwise, everyone implying I don't have respect for myself or that I don't have self-esteem is simply wrong. And usually, not very helpful. Maybe for others, it would be a wake-up call. But I can't tell you how much it didn't feel useful at all. I genuinely have incredible resilience. I lost a parent early in life and made it through childhood poverty and self-esteem. And I am personally incredibly proud of myself that I can consider what is best for other people. Even while I struggle, I do not struggle with standing up for myself ever. I wrote that a week after I found out. I also want to caution the typical chorus of calling cheating partners every derogatory word in the book. Many deserve it, of course. But life is usually not so black and white. And while I don't excuse her actions, my wife is not how many of you describe her. People have complexity. She can lie to me and feel remorse. She can feel controlled without my being controlling. She can have trauma and extend that to me. But that doesn't mean I'm responsible for it. Not all lying is gaslighting. She can be empathetic to others and not to me. I'm not apologizing for her actions she will feel the consequences for them. In general, I found the tone of many comments surprisingly unhelpful. But hey, you get what you pay for. For the future, I think we should remember that many people posting on this sub are having some of the worst times of their life. And extending some grace is not that hard. Thanks for reading. Reminder I am not the original poster. I hope they get separated soon. She seems to have an alcohol problem too. Oh I remember this post I also remember commenting. Asking how Op's wife is remorseful if she continues to cheat. I have yet to receive an answer. Oop seems to conflatuate confuse self-respect with his misplaced pride in his resilience. Hope he will leave at the end and stop burning himself for keeping his cheating wife warm. He is very empathetic. He is also a doormat. Why is she wanted attention in these so often as an excuse for cheating? No kidding. Isn't wanting sexual attention a pretty standard desire for most people? Everyone likes feeling wanted. This post is so sad. 
She's not remorseful about her cheating. She's ashamed she got caught and there's a canyon between remorse and shame. Shame is a reflection on how she feels about herself. She's still not thinking about him. She has decided to be selfish now. And she's free to do so. But he needs to be selfish now too. Or she will drain every drop of joy from him until he doesn't recognize who he is. I wish him peace. She's never done this before. So it isn't who she is. I just wanted to address that part. People absolutely can do things that are out of character. However, it is still that person WHO has done it at that time. Whether they were under the influence of drugs or alcohol, talked into it, having a mental illness, psychotic break, whatever. I don't necessarily believe all cheaters are inherently evil or cheaters for life. However, even just one instance is going to have an effect on your partner. Actions have consequences. If I went out and got drunk and beat someone up, I wouldn't be able to say, that's not who I am, there are still consequences. Sad ones for the person I hurt, and consequences for me. It is okay for someone who has been hurt to say, that may not be who you were, but it is who you were for that moment. And who I am is a person who can't put up with that. Her therapist seemed to tell her. She's never done this before. Said it isn't who she is. She was feeling trapped and wanted attention the leave from work and. Freedom is working for her mental health. Which is true. It was a violation of privacy the way I discovered it. WTF? The therapist is basically blaming her cheating on him? This guy is deep in denial. That last message. Ouch. You're all wrong. Let me explain why, goes on to list exactly how what everyone told him happened. Am I imagining things? Or has there been a surge recently in people being called, controlling, for expecting their significant other to not cheat on them? The way this guy is talking about everything screams doormat to me. Quote dot dot. When I think my wife is in a stable place. I'll ask for separation. She has already packed her things intending to move out anyway. So I think it can be relatively seamless. Oh. You poor. Foolish man. You write this as if it was your decision. Trying to cling to some shred of dignity. But if her bags are already packed. She's leaving you. Quit lying to yourself. Seeing how defensive he is. This dummy will be caught up in this for a long ass time. He basically trauma bonded. He will not remove her from his life. She'll be out when she wants to. I'm willing to bet even his next girlfriend, wife will have to deal with the hold this one have on. Him. Despite his blind stubbornness I wish this guy the best overcoming this monumental circus on fire. There is a reason I'm mentioning what I am. Bipolar and borderline personality disorder both share some symptoms. One is promiscuity. I have BPD and had that issue. That's because I thought someone having sex with me. Intimacy. Meant they liked, cared for me. I thought it was what I needed to do to get people. Men. To like, care for me. IIRC both share another trait. Abandonment issues. Which could tie in with the promiscuity because if I sleep with him. He'll like me and won't leave. There is way more to it. But that's the gist. It took an ex-BF to help me see this pattern. Before we started officially dating. And we held off on sex for the first three months. The relationship didn't last. 1.5 years. As I was undiagnosed and had no idea how to handle the thoughts, feelings, emotions I experienced. After our breakup, I saw a doctor and was diagnosed. That didn't stop the sleeping around after our breakup. Note, I never cheated, because I fell back into the cycle and also spiraled because I was deeply hurt. I'm 45 now and this was in my early 30s. It took way too long to find all this out, realize it.
I'm not defending nor condoning Oops ex-wife's behavior because regardless of mental health issues, BP, BPD people still know what's right and wrong. She knew it was wrong in the first place and she knew it was wrong to continue to cheat. I knew it was an unhealthy coping mechanism to deal with, bury my pain. But it didn't stop me. It's hard to have these disorders but it's equally, if not harder for our partners to deal with them. Oop sounds like a good guy who though has flaws. Like anyone, stood by his wife as best he could to help her, support her and love her. What his ex did was very hurtful and selfish. And I know she knows it was wrong but I also think she wasn't given proper tools to help regulate her disorder. Then she cheated, got caught, expressed guilt but then projected an unfortunate coping mechanism, BP, BPD have, regardless of the situation, on Oop to make him feel it was his fault. My personal opinion is that she, besides hurting Oop and destroying their relationship, screwed herself because she had someone who was doing everything in their power to help her. I've been with my husband over 10 years. Married for 7. And he has been my absolute rock. I definitely don't deserve this man. I've never cheated. But in my episodes, I've been very hurtful with words during fights. And my husband, my husband, he has stood by my side through it all. I've been much better at managing myself over the years. But a lot of that is because I have the love and support of my husband. And to me, that's also where Oops X hurt herself. It's hard for people with MH issues, disorders to find good support. She had it and she threw it away. I have no doubt at all that she will come to this realization. I hope Oops seeks therapy for himself because he's not at fault. And as I said, being the healthy half of a relationship with someone with MH issues comes with its own stresses, emotions etc. which can be hard to deal with, and that he can heal and find happiness in himself. I also hope his ex finds a proper therapist, because it doesn't sound like she had a good one, and finds the right medication, proper tools to cope with her disorder and starts on her path the getting better, and then sincerely apologizes. Sorry for the novel. Note, the ex BFI mentioned above, a couple of years after I married my husband, I messaged the ex of Facebook. Why? To apologize. I explained to him that I was diagnosed after our breakup. That I had spent the years after managing myself and my disorder. And to give an actual heartfelt apology for my behavior when we were together. That he didn't deserve it. He did nothing wrong and that I understood. Now why he had to walk away, as hard as it was, but also kind of a thank you because even though it hurt a lot and I spiraled, it also gave me the kick in the ass I needed to go see a doctor and get my MH on track. He said he appreciated it, was glad I'm doing better and that was that. I hope I'm wrong, since Reddit users often are, but I have a super duper strong suspicion that this story is going to go from she's not the terrible person you guys think she is, and end in turns out she's absolutely the terrible person you guys thought she was. You can downvote me all you want but op is pathetic person with no backbone. These two are just a complete train wreck. Everything is someone else's fault or triggered from some past trauma. His wife was a cheater. That's pretty black and white. He either accepts that she cheats or moves on. She will never not cheat. And there will always be something or someone for her to blame. It will never be her fault. I get that he loves her. But Jesus dude. She's a disaster that is going to drag down everyone around her. Let her issues be someone else's problem. Bro is being abused. He is being abused. She might not mean to abuse him, but he is being abused. He's very empathetic. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our playlists full of similar content. Epic Aircast is like doom scrolling for your ears.
please like, share, and subscribe.